Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be doing a little bit of a performance comparison between a couple different options that are available to us when using animations with Unity's Entity Component System. Now in a previous video I gave kind of an introduction into a couple of these different animation options which are available to us and showed you kind of how to set those up and give you a basic overview of how to use them. So I wanted to take it a little bit of a step further and actually do some performance comparisons to see how well these different animations options scale when we start adding more and more entities. Now I went into this performance testing with some idea in my mind about where I thought these different animation solutions would line up and how they would kind of rank amongst each other and I actually ended up being quite surprised with the, with the results. So I do want to encourage you all to take a quick moment to just kind of consider what you think the performance numbers will be for these different animation options and how many entities they can support because that's basically what we're going to be testing. I'm going to get into how I have the testing set up here in just a moment, but really what we're going to be testing is how many entities can each of these animation options handle while still keeping a solid 60 or 30 frames per second frame rate. Now, before we get into how have these tests set up, I do just want to point out a couple of very important caveats just so we're clear about a couple of things. Number one being is that two of these animation solutions that I'm featuring in today's video are paid assets on the Unity Asset Store. Also, I am an affiliate of the Unity Asset Store, so that means if you do decide to purchase anything using the links down in the description below, I do receive a small commission of that purchase. So do just keep that in mind if you're considering purchasing any of the assets featured in today's video. Now, the second caveat that I wanna bring up is that I'm gonna be showcasing all these different animation solutions, pretty much how they come right out of the box. I'm not going to be doing any type of performance optimizations or anything like that. So for example, one thing that you're gonna notice very quickly is that pretty much all these different animation solutions are going to be limited by the GPU. Now there are definitely some optimizations that we could do to implement say different levels of detail to you know, reduce the number of draw calls and the amount of polygons that are being rendered in a given frame to give us some better GPU performance. Now again, I didn't go ahead and implement that even though all these different animation solutions do support something like that. I just kind of wanted to create this video to give you an idea about the performance numbers that you might expect right out of the box, but just know that there are definitely further optimizations that you can do from here. Now the final thing that I wanted to bring up is this is going to be the first time that I'm really doing a little bit more of a concrete performance test where I'm kind of showing actual numbers for different variables of different things and this is something that I would like to do some more for different things of Unity ECS so if you do have any suggestions about how I can improve my these videos for performance testing whether it's something with this specific video or in performance testing videos going forward definitely let me know down in the comments section below okay so now let's get into how I have these tests set up so you can kind of understand my methodologies of comparing these different animation solutions so the three different animation solutions that I'm going to be comparing are number one, which is the hybrid entities solution. So this is basically what you can do in Unity by default. Basically, the idea of it is you have kind of a blank entity that doesn't have any visuals associated with it, but it still does all the data side processing of everything like that. Each of these blank entities are going to go ahead and spawn a companion game object. Now, this companion game object is just a regular Unity game object with regular Unity animator components on it. And then that is actually going to be doing all the visuals. And what ends up happening is we take everything off of the you know, positional transform data from the entity and we send that over to the hybrid entity. Again, check out my last video if you wanna see how a solution like this is set up. The second animation solution is the GPU ECS animation baker. The idea with this one is it actually bakes the animations down into a texture and all that can be sampled by the GPU. And then everything is basically running all on the entity side. And the final solution is an ECS animation based solution called Rukhanka and the whole idea with this one is you use the regular unity animator components kind of as authoring components but all the animations are happening over on the ECS side. So these are entities rendering and not just regular Unity game objects. And then you'll notice there are two other types of entities that I can spawn. And the reason for these is I want to have a little bit of a baseline. So I have the static game objects and the static entities. So with these static game objects, this is gonna be kind of similar to the hybrid entities approach where we kind of spawn an entity which spawns a game object. The difference here being is that this game object that spawned doesn't have any animator components associated with it. So it's basically just going to be spawning our low poly asset in a T pose, and it's just going to be basically static doing no animation. So I kind of want to do a little bit of performance comparison to see how the performance scales when we don't have any animator components on any game objects. And then I'm doing the same thing with entities where I basically just have essentially this static game object, but I'm converting it over to an entity and I'm instantiating it as an entity rather than a game object. So I just kind of wanted to get a little bit of a 
performance differential there. So with these tests, I'm essentially spawning a bunch of entities and seeing how many entities each of these solutions can handle while still keeping a solid 60 or 30 frames per second. Now you notice that I do have two different camera modes that I'm gonna be testing this in. So there's the wide camera. The idea with the wide camera is that we're going to be rendering all the entities that we have spawned in the world just to test what the performance numbers look like when we can actually visually see all the characters that we're animating. And then I have the close camera, which renders just about say a hundred entities at a time. And then we can have a bunch more off screen. So I wanna see kind of the performance differential about how many it can handle with other entities being off screen. And then I'm gonna be doing that entire test both with stationary entities as well as moving entities. Cause I wanted to see how the performance scales while we're just doing kind of a little bit of lightweight work with each of these entities where we're just also moving these entities around in the world because most often in a real game project we're not just going to have a bunch of stationary characters running an animation loop all these entities are actually going to be doing something so i'm just kind of doing a little bit of lightweight work to see if there's any major performance differences here now as for the hardware that i'm going to be running these tests on the first one is my pc it's a couple years old now but i would still consider this pc to be kind of at the higher end of what you might expect for someone playing your game to be running on and i'm going to be playing this on a 1440p monitor and also because i just recently picked up the steam deck to do a little bit more performance testing i'm going to be running these same tests on the Steam Deck as well. So we can kind of get a difference between what we might expect on the higher end and lower end as far as performance goes. So anyways, with all that in mind, I do just want to give you one last moment to kind of make some considerations and hypotheses in your mind about how many entities each of these tests are going to be able to handle on my higher end computer as well as the Steam Deck. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into the results right now. So we'll go ahead and start with these stationary tests on my computer. And as you can see, here's the results with the wide camera. And you'll notice that for pretty much all five of these different entity types that we're testing, they have pretty similar numbers. At 60 frames per second, we're able to handle about 1,200 to 1,300 entities. And at 30 frames per second, that number's a little bit above 2,500. However, you will notice that the GPU ECS animations actually can handle a slightly higher number of entities at 60 and 30 frames per second. My assumption is that is just because with the GPU ECS animations, there probably are some optimizations about how that entity data is being sent over to the GPU for processing because it is a GPU-based solution. Now, pretty much what this initial test is telling me right now is that it almost doesn't matter which animation system we're using because we're pretty much getting the exact same results whether we have static game objects and entities that don't have any animation components versus the ones that actually do have the animator components on them. You notice that the hybrid and Rukonka animation solutions do have slightly lower entity counts than these static ones, but it's really not by much. So basically the way that I'm interpreting this is if we actually have all the entities in view, we're pretty much limited by the GPU at this point. And this is where, again, it may be very helpful for you to implement some type of LODs because when we're at the scale of rendering, you know, 2,700 of these entities, it's going to be really hard to tell individual details so we can probably get away with much lower poly models. And just to give you a little bit of context about how much we're actually rendering. So at 1300 entities, we're looking at 21.5 thousand draw calls per frame, and it's rendering uh, 41.2 million triangles every frame. Bumping that up to 2,700 entities, we can pretty much double those numbers. So we're looking at 43.4K draw calls and 82.8 million triangles. Now, again, I'll say that I was pretty surprised with these results because I think these entity counts were a little bit lower than I originally thought they were going to be, but that really just goes to show you, you know, how expensive it is to render all these different things at once. So again, if you do want to start rendering, you know, thousands and thousands of different things, you're definitely going to need, be needing to do some optimizations on the GPU side. Now things do get a little bit more interesting when we go to the close camera. So the close camera, again, we're only rendering about 100 or so entities. And then basically all the other entities, they're going to be essentially calculated off of screen. Now it was really interesting to see these static game objects could actually handle a quite large number of these game objects off screen. So at 60 frames per second, we could have up to 50,000 of them. And then at 30 frames per second, we're looking at 111,000 of these. And it was really interesting to compare that to the static entities where we're actually getting 
pretty low number. So we're looking at 2,400 and 4,700 at 60 and 30 frames per second. And then again, going a little bit deeper into the profilers, we're still pretty much limited just by kind of some GPU cleanup operations is kind of what I was seeing. But it is really interesting to see kind of the major differential between these static game objects versus these static entities. I assume that the game objects maybe have some optimizations, you know, as far as, you know, considering what things need to be rendered and such. And so you see that the hybrid entities can actually support more entities than the static entities um, because those are again game objects which for some reason seem to be actually be able to support more entities off camera and obviously the crazy standout one here is the gpu ecs animation so at 60 frames per second we're just under 400,000 of these entities and at 30 frames per second we're looking at three quarters of a million entities so those are you know quite high numbers again there are probably some you know major efficiencies that can be done to just say that you know we don't have to worry about these particular entities off screen and that's why we can get some of these crazy high numbers here and then you'll notice the rukonka animations is pretty much the same as the static entities and again it seems like we're pretty much just limited by how unity ecs is rendering these entities again those are pretty similar numbers and when i was looking at the performance metrics a little bit closer it didn't see like there was anything actually on the rukonka animation system that is you know we're actually taxing these performance it's really again just things on the unity entity side so now here are the results for steam deck as you can see the results show a pretty similar story except the numbers are of course much lower when we have the wide camera we can only get about 200 to 300 entities and still keep a solid 60 frames per second and at 30 frames per second we're looking at between 450 and 650 entities again these numbers are all pretty close so it seems like again we're pretty much just limited by the graphics processing on the steam deck and there was really too much overhead from the individual animation systems and then going to the close camera again we're seeing a pretty much similar story as what we were seeing on pc where with these static game objects we can actually get pretty decent performance showing about 1100 at 60 frames per second and up to about 11,000 while still keeping 30 frames per second static entities you'll see that we're still pretty much limited by you know whatever on the unity ecs side so you know between 200 and 800 entities depending on what frame rate we're targeting the hybrid entity we do actually get a little bit better performance there the GPU ECS animations again we're getting much higher numbers here again it is a little bit interesting to see that we can only do about 2,000 at 60 frames per second but all the way up to a quarter million at 30 frames per second and then you'll see the Rukonka animations is pretty much limited at the same frame rates that the static entities are as well so now we'll go over the results of the moving tests again these are basically the exact same tests as before but the only difference is I added in an extra system that actually moves these entities around so even with these static game objects and static entities entities are all basically fixed in a t pose but they're still going to be moving around in a little bit of a circle so again i just kind of wanted to test performance a little bit more when we're actually doing some things on the unity ecs side to see if that kind of affects how well these numbers scale so going over the wide camera tests on pc where again we're going to be rendering all the entities on screen you can see that the numbers are pretty similar to the stationary tests but with maybe just a little bit less for some of the overhead that's caused by these different systems um, however they are pretty comparable to these stationary tests again because at this point we're looking at you know up to about 3,000 entities running these moving tests that's really not all that much for unity ecs and we do see a little bit more of a performance differential when we move over to the closer camera where again where we're just kind of rendering a small section of the entities and in theory we can have more entities and then when we have more entities then these transformation systems that I had added in become a little bit more of a draw on the system. So you can see looking at these static game objects when we have the camera close, instead of where previously when everything was stationary, we could have 50,000, we can only now have about 8,000. And then similarly at 30 frames per second, we're down from 111,000 down to 20,000 where we're kind of doing some moving. The static entities is pretty interesting because we're getting pretty much the same performance numbers that we were getting on the stationary test. And that's because, again, we're not actually having to synchronize any entity positions with game object positions or anything like that, like we are in the hybrid entities where, um, you know, we actually do have a little bit of performance overhead from syncing that data between the entity and the game object. And so just to give you a little bit of an idea about the performance numbers for these particular uh, hybrid sync systems. So when we're at 60 frames per second, we're processing 3,100 entities. The system that is actually synchronizing the positions from the entities to the game objects 
which again all has to run on the main thread without the burst compiler is taking about 2.5 milliseconds and then we go to 6900 entities at 30 frames per second then that system is taking about six milliseconds so it's not an insignificant amount of time but it's not like a crazy amount of time either so that's just kind of something to keep in mind um, and then looking at the gpu ecs animations of course these are you know very high numbers as we've kind of seen with all our other tests However, just note here that the performance numbers are not as good as the stationary tests, because when we get into the point, we're actually simulating hundreds of thousands of entities. Now these moving systems are going to have a little bit more of a performance impact, even though because these are all entities, we can have these all running in parallel threads with the burst compiler and everything like that. Um, you know, it does get to the point where it actually, you know, starts to take away some performance and all that. And then again, with the Rukonka animations, it is seems to be a little bit unfortunate that it's pretty Pretty much just limited at whatever these static entities are able to run at as well. So then here are the numbers on Steam Deck. At this point, these numbers kind of all line up with the other tests that we've done so far, as far as the you know PC moving test and the previous Steam Deck test, where we're just kind of seeing similar patterns, but the numbers, of course, are much smaller on the lower end hardware. So, anyways, those are the results that I've done with a little bit of performance testing. So I just wanted to share these results with you all because I did find it a little bit interesting. Hope you found it interesting as well. And definitely let me know if you want to see any more of these types of performance comparisons or I'm comparing different implementations of things in Unity ECS. And of course, let me know if there are any ways that you think I could improve, say, this particular test or any tests within in the future. Um, by the way, I will have a link down in the description if you do want to run this test on your own devices just to see what kind of numbers you're getting on your specific hardware. And just keep in mind that some of these performance numbers may change over time as Unity does improve things on the ECS side and some of these asset store manufacturers continue updating their assets. So anyways, with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.